began writing my book on the Benoni, I wanted a course in Chessable that could be useful for Kings Indian players, Grunfield players, Binko players, Benoni players, especially the sidelines. These lines are pulled directly from my own repertoire with modern engine improvements, of course. It's, I find myself when I play in tournaments having to win every game or I'm tanking my rating as a highest rated player. And I found that too many books written by quote unquote chess professionals, the people who play at the top level, there's too many lines as how to play for a draw with black. And that's not what you're gonna find in this course. This course is nettlesome, it keeps complications, and you can fight for the win every game. I wanted to showcase a few lines and provide some updates. So this course is about to be on sale for the next few days. And one of the first comments that I got was, we need some tactics in this. And anytime I get a reasonable request in my courses, I go back in and add it. So as you can see, we've got all the major sidelines covered, and this is a full repertoire against 1d4, knight f3, and c4. We got your, your English lines covered. And I've added in 200 tactics on the Benoni. And what's different about these tactics, I find the modern way that most chess players are studying tactics is, is incomplete. We're using these monstrous tactics database where the majority of these tactics will never occur in our games because the pawn structures don't match with what we play and it doesn't match with the openings. These tactics were pulled directly from the trainable variations. So real games, non-constructed problems, real players have missed these. So for instance, in our very first problem, you can tell <laughs> just at a glance, this is a Benoni structure. And anytime we're solving tactics, what is the most forcing move? Well, I immediately look at the fact that the king and queen are nice and lined up for us. I'm gonna go with rook e8. And that just gets some time with the rook where it needs to be. Now, most forcing move again, I'm looking at taking. Now, can I pick up time? Yes, bishop a6 check. And then finally, again, we ask what is the most forcing move? Do we have anything aggressive? Yep. Checks and captures aren't there, but I can make a strong threat with bishop c4 as there's no way to defend the pawn and the pawn's gonna fall. And as you can see in this tactic and all the tactics, it is noted the game that it came from. So if you wanna see the entire game, have at it. I felt it was extremely important to pull tactics from actual games that lined up with our theory in the main course. So you're practicing exactly what you need. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into some of my favorite content because being someone who plays the white side of the Fianchetto variation, and there's multiple move orders to get here. So the standard Fianchetto position is what we're seeing here. And there's a couple of different ways for white to play after our next move. Move eight is the first time that we show the flexibility of the course. Because often in the Benoni, we have this knee-jerk reaction to play a6. And then white immediately responds a4 to stop us from getting space with b5. So I started asking the question, can we save on a6 and it be a benefit? And often the answer is yes. You don't want to rush a6 it really cuts down on your flexibility. So we'll see. Now, the first move is rook e8. And we're gonna cover 10 a4, h3, rook e1. Those are the three major sidelines, and then bishop f4 and knight d2 are the main lines. And you go, well, this seems like a lot of theory, but I want you to notice the structural overlap. I'm just gonna hit the high notes, but Black can definitely play for a win in an uncompromising position in all variations. So say for instance, let's get started with a4. And this is just a knee-jerk reaction by white that normally they would play a, a6 and a4 is the immediate follow-up. 
but it's useless here, really. And we can start placing pressure on white now. So what I will mention is why bishop f4 and knight d2 are the main lines is white has an ideal setup that they're looking for. They want to bother our Benoni pawn. They want a bishop on f4 and knight on c4. So in all variations, it is absolutely essential that we prevent that. So taking that into account, major memory marker and theme. Now let's go from here, knight e4. Okay, we're preventing knight d2, and we're freeing up some key squares. We're in a cramped position, so trading pieces is beneficial. And now on knight d2, very often you just have to immediately go back, but here we have the convenient slide over with the rook for a bit of pressure. And of course, I'll go much deeper in the main course with the trainable variations, but we're just giving you the short and sweet sample, if you will. So coming back after rook e8, what about h3? And I like this flexible move. I, I like moves that it's got a subtlety to it. a6 screams, I want to play b5, and they're going to stop you. Bishop d7, on the other hand, I want to play b5, but very often it can be missed. One of the main moves is knight d2 here, where we get in b5, and we've already got some nice counterplay on the queenside wing. But white's astute, he's gonna play a4. And now I want you to see that pattern overlap here. We're back to knight e4, and we're back to rook b4. So if you learn the scheme of development once, you've already got it with two of the sidelines. Coming back, well, what about rook e1? Okay, so what is white telegraphing with rook e1? He's wanting to play e4 and eventually e5. And another theme of the Benoni that we really need to take into account, if we ever place a knight on e5, if you have to capture back with a pawn, you're losing in every endgame because you've given white a protected pass pawn to push in the future. So we must be capturing back with a piece on e5. And if I can place a piece on e5, e4, e5 is just not going to take place. So, knight bd7, and on e4, understanding that they want to play e5, we play against this thing. Knight g4. Knight d2. Okay. We go to e5. We're looking to hop into d3, so they need to do something about that. Now, what is the main problem here? They want to play f4. So, play directly against f4. A counterintuitive move, g5. Now, knight g6, pressure f4. They've gotten in knight c4, and this is a typical move. Knight b6 get rid of that guy, and after takes, takes, f5, black stands better with pressure in the center. We're going to be able to expand on the queen side in the future with, say, bishop d7, b5, and it's not quite clear how white can make anything of the space in the center and king side. So let's look at some of the main lines. So coming back through these moves, let's look at bishop f4 on move 10. So we talked about the importance of making sure that white cannot get the ideal setup. So one of the memory markers is very often going to be playing knight h5 to harass the bishop in a lot of lines. But immediately we can play bishop f5 here. And this is by far the first choice of the machine. This, if knight d2, we have knight h5, and this is already annoying, we're not allowing that ideal setup by white. So knight h4 is by far the most played move, and we're going to force extension from the opponent. Bishop g4, and unless they play queen d2, the answer is knight h5. 
So if h3, knight h5. If rook e1, knight h5. <laughs> Queen d2. An interesting move that had been played in less than 10 games before the course came out, knight a6. b5 had been played previously, but I felt that it was taking unnecessary risk because we can slow play knight c7, adding some pressure to the d pawn, and eventually play b5 where the pawn is going to be protected. There's little to no risk in this position. So that's the secondary line. It's almost as popular as the main line. Now on to the main event with the main line as we roll back through to get to move 10. We've got knight d2. So with bishop f4, we had knight h5. With knight d2, they want to go to the c4 square. We need to be able to challenge the knight in some way. This is why rook e8 is superior to a6. You have the ability to play b6 here with the option to play bishop a6 to harass that knight on c4. a4. We can go ahead and play knight bd7. And it should be noted if they drop in knight c4, knight e5, because we can capture back with the rook. So h3. And this is a good prophylactic move, taking away use of the g4 square for us. So we don't have maneuvers like that, which we've seen in the past. So white with a4 could have the option to play knight b5 as well as knight c4 to pressure this pawn. So let's just stay flexible and take that away. And after knight c4, hopefully you've got the theme down by now. How can we challenge this knight? Knight e5. And after knight a3, this is one of the more difficult moves to find is you see the attack coming. And this is where a lot of Benoni players are going to go wrong unless they've studied this middle game position. How can we play against this coming attack? We don't have g5 like we had earlier. So what do we do? Well, we play directly against f4. Knight h5. We'll give that one an exclaim. Because you go, well, what about f4? Take. Take. b5. Excellent development over here. And bishop takes e5. White has got a very awkward position. And black has no weaknesses to worry about. And to give you an objective engine evaluation here, Stockfish, 16, of course. It likes black at depth. Give it another second to get a better depth. Depth, 25. It's got black at almost a pawn and a half edge in this position. And with the overall main line with e4 first, much like the sideline, we've got to generate that counterplay, and we can't do it in the center or king side, so b5 is the way to go. Bishop a6, everybody's working, and for a pawn, white's in a bit of a bind here. Get the exchange, and queen f6. It's improving on a game from 2020. And after queen e2, Rook E to B8, and black's doing quite well. And it's really unclear how white is going to get out of the bind. So hopefully you've enjoyed some of these lines directly from the Benoni Simplified course on Chessable. And it is probably when you see this video, it is on sale. And I will put the link down below. Think about checking it out if you're looking for something add a little spice to facing 1d4, c4, and knight f3.